Alrighty then, this will definitely be one of the best ways for you guys to farm arcanes over the next few weeks, so let's take full advantage of this. In this video, I'll cover everything that you need to know, but most importantly, to all my solo players out there, I got a few builds for you. However, they also work in a group format as well. So, Clark, less yapping, let's go ahead and jump straight into the builds with some timestamps added beneath the video. We're going to start things off with which arcanes can you go ahead and get. You're going to go ahead and talk to the Jahu Gargoyle inside your dojo if your clan has already placed one down. If not, enter the settings to decorate your dojo room and place down this statue to go ahead and get access to it. The arcanes are all of the arcane rewards that the Eidolons drop. These rewards were also used in the past operation Scarlet Spear, so if you did that, these may be familiar to you. In my opinion, I'd personally get these icons on screen, in somewhat order ranking from top to bottom. Now they're good arcanes and they'll be used in quite a lot of builds, especially arcane energize, which has been proven to really help those builds that struggled with energy returns. Each arcane costs a different amount per arcane in the reward material called grotesque splinters which you get from killing the boss i'll explain more on that later it would definitely going to take quite a few runs to go and get some of these arcane sets rolling in but this clan event is still ongoing for a while so take your time even if you could manage just two hours a day you'd still make a good dent in progress here okay so what do i do to go ahead and get the splinters well with the new update whispers in the wall on deimos once completed the quest line you can go and begin a new boss fight on the node Ethervo. this is an assassin nation mission but instead of just entering and killing the boss you're gonna have to go and do a few steps beforehand so let's just keep this part simple short and to the point for those who don't know step one when you enter the mission go find a probe located on the map walk up to it interact grab it off its holster step two with probe in hand head over to your next waypoint and inject the probe into the vitrium Step three, the victory will now seek out Murmur Eyes for us to go ahead and collect. Simply jump into them and you're kind of getting the idea. The eyes do go ahead and have a duration though, so don't waste time. Get moving and collecting. The victory has around a minute duration before it can pulse out seeking more eyes. But if you kill enemies around the located zone, it decreases the timer, rewarding you for being active and speeding up the process. The process countdown can actually be halted, however, as if enemies are in the zone, they can go and block the Vitrium's vision. So go ahead and kill those enemies and keep the area clear from hostiles. So after a certain amount of collected Murmur Eyes, the Vitrians begin to exhaust and move into a new location, and you'll basically be wanting to repeat the process. But you can activate more Vitrians after the first area is completed, so do go and keep that in mind. It's not always just one Vitrium. Keep doing this until you collect 30 Murmur Eyes, and now you'll be prompted to head over to the Murmur Boss's location. Step 4. Now, Step 4 doesn't actually have to be Step 4, but somewhere in this mission is a Void Angel, and it's important for the curse rewards for the clan event. I do actually have a guide on Void Angels if you need a full breakdown on how to go ahead and fight them, but they're pretty simple to go ahead and figure out. But basically, if you ignore the angel, it will consume the curse rewards you get from the boss at the end. If you kill the angel, it won't consume the curse rewards. That's basically about it. And finally, step five, the final step. I've already covered this boss again in a previous video with a little more explanation on what his tax actually do. So if you want to know more, please go check that out. Otherwise, begin by activating his summoning, then go ahead and kill his fragmented tide of the indifference enemies, and once that health bar is low enough, they will fuse together and become whatever monstrosity this actually is. When you finish the fight and dealt the final blow, you will be rewarded with a few different things depending on which route you took. So on screen are the rewards about the amounts that you go ahead and get. When you've got your rewards, you can now spend them at the Jahu statue, and the circle is complete. Get farming, guys. Alrighty then, Clark, what about some builds? All right, straight to the point, here's my Styanax build meant for solo purposes. In stat order, I would personally focus for strength, then duration, then some range. The strength helps with his buffs and damage, the duration helps his ability timers, and the range is a good quality of life to his Pharah Strike ability, but can also be a cheeky addition to the final stand Javelin Explosion range. The efficiency in this build is low, and it can easily be as low as possible due to one of the most popular Steel Path combination builds in Styanax, subsuming in Norris ability over his first, in which gives us an energy multiplier to all energy sources. That means that this pairs with his third ability, Rally Point, which gives us an even teammate's energy over time. On top of that, Norrish also adds Viral to his outgoing spears, so it pairs really well with that Viral Slash combination. The Augment is the most important mod to and add into this build, as it gives us Overguard protection on each Javelin that damages an enemy. This is extremely important to our survival within the boss fight. Again, this can also apply to allies and even like companions in your group. 
As for the Arcanes, I went pure weapon focus. You see, Styanax doesn't overly need much else from here. I mean, you can scale the strength for the duration further if you want to cover those other areas or even areas like energy. But for the most part, his build feels pretty complete with the mods and subsumed ability alone. The Arcanes can buff whatever main weapon you're using, be it a primary or a secondary. And honestly, it's advice going to take that extra damage. Now, if you are one that's going to use some Archon shards here, I would personally keep it simple and go for any of these as they all work fantastically within the build and are pretty self-explanatory but as always it's more about what you actually have because Archon Shards are limited to us at the moment. Ability rotations for Styanax. Now since I'm using the preparation mod in mine I can straight away cast my rally points go and get energy back and then combo it with Nourish. This absolutely ramps energy returns from there onwards I don't really need to worry. Now if you don't have that luxury or if you're not using any kind of energy efficiency at the very beginning like preparation or uh, Amber Shards for it then please just go ahead and get a couple of kills activate your rally point first and then get your nourish in a little bit later the fourth ability final stand is something that you'll be using a lot throughout the mission it's the main core of the build you can use it offensively to go and kill enemies in, in your way or you can even go and use it defensively and protect yourself with overguards either and or in second the pharaoh strike is used for any tanky eximus units that are taking just a little bit too long for you to go and kill if you're struggling but most importantly if you are focusing the void angel in this mission to keep those curses then pharaoh strike with 200 strength will remove the armor from the angel in one swift ability cast that's mostly about it with this build it has a lot of room for error due to how much survivability it has and it can easily solo the boss and all enemies throughout the mission without much issues lovely jubbly next build is for octavia and guys i didn't really see this one coming but here we go in stat focus order i would go duration first strength second and then a little bit of range lastly the duration is going to be for the uptime of our abilities but heavily focused on the length of her first in particular strength will then go and follow and scale our damage output with better buff returns and then finding range is something that does go ahead and help but we don't really need an awful lot of it at the same time it's situational to the user in my opinion the efficiency in this build is quite low because as you can see it's a juggle of three major corrupt mods this basically means that my abilities will cost a lot more however i do pair this build with the new grimoire tone that we have focusing on the zarta invocation getting back energy return over time like it's absolutely no issue so my abilities can cost a lot more because it doesn't really matter and i did also go and throw in equilibrium it can come in handy but it's not a necessity in my opinion you'll spend most of the time in this build invisible but not immune to incoming damage so mods like rolling guards on boss slash procs and prime sure footed are still good to have as backups to help aid you in times where you could have gone down unprepared and funnily enough i wanted a way to go and deal with the angel for this build so i actually took an ability that you might recognize from earlier we subsumed in styanax's pharaoh strike ability to help us armor strip eximus units and the void angel and although that we could go and use intensify here that would actually give us 100 armor strip right off the bat i actually preferred august secrets because i can quickly spam the second ability and get shields back if mine go down given a little bit of gate and protection whenever needed also added on top of that invisibility however if i just get one percent more from mole augmented here i can go ahead and get the full armor strip as for the arcanes we scale both duration and strength here octavia is the weapon so i'm focusing more on her than adding weapon arcanes in but hey each of their own. If it works for you, then chuck them in. Archon shards for Octavia. So I'm going to go and keep this part short. I would simply just whack in five crimson shards. She doesn't overly need the utility in many other areas, but the duration or ability strength would work way better here, in my opinion. As always, fit in whatever you have to work with. The ability rotations for the Octavia builds. So I'm going to be wanting some energy and protection first. So at the beginning of the mission, I really want to go and use my Grimoire's ult fire on a couple of enemies and let it build up my energy return. The moment I have enough, the first ability I'll cast is her third metronome. Spam my crouch button and enter invisibility mode. This is my safety net that allows me to get away with most and especially not being a target. So now that we're off to a good start, on the vitrine parts of the mission, I'll place my mallet down and let enemies attack it. This causes a distraction to them, slowly ramping up damage as well, and they will go ahead and kill themselves. From there, I can go ahead and combine and buff the mallet with her fourth ability, Amp. This will be my add clear up, but it's also the exact combination that I will do against the boss. One and four, one and four. And just like the Styanax build, I will have subsumed her Pharaoh Strike ability to remove the Void Angel's armor. That makes the fight a little easier for myself. But do keep in mind there are other options like Vastalog. Now it is to note that the boss will target the mallet and receive damage from the mallet. So pairing a weapon with this only but speeds up the fight itself. 
It's a really effortless build, but quite a fair bit of safety to it as well. Companions. And there's honestly quite a few different companions to go ahead and run. I'm not going to break down each and every single build in much detail here, but on screen are my advice. These are some of the candidates that you're wanting to aim for. What I will break down, however, is something that I'm quite enjoying, a Primer Hound build. Since the addition of Manifold Bonds, your companions, when using their abilities, will proc status effects depending on whatever they have equipped on their weapons. In this case, my Hound for this fight is using the Batter 10. So I apply elements that I'm not really using, like Magnetic, Toxin, puncture and impact when it comes to synergize perspective mod being thrown in it also adds electric giving you all five elements that are bouncing and procking multiple times so this basically means that i can use mods on my primary or secondary builds like galvanized aptitude or the secondary equivalent galvanized shot and i can scale my damage further due to the enemies and boss being debuffed by extra elements i wouldn't normally have applied but in anyways use whatever companion that you guys can fit in it's not that deep in my opinion i'm just really digging the hounds lately so I thought I'd share. Weapon builds. So quite a lot of weapons are being thrown around and tested here and there. And honestly, quite a lot of them are actually relatively close in terms of damage. For example, pretty much all of the Incarnate primary weapons deal good damage against the boss and they work well. So if you are looking for a damage direction, you can take something like this on the screen. This is my burst and Incarnate build. To put it brief, damage, multi-shot, critical, and elemental for radiation. You see, that's what most builds are going to be focusing on for now. The boss has a lot of damage attenuation and I've spent quite a fair bit of time trying different builds but ultimately seeing each of them barely marginalize each other in terms of dps so my honest opinion pick your own poison however what i will go and do is throw up this nadarak build you see since most players have done the new war before all of this you will actually have this bow and it genuinely surprises me as to how well it can actually keep up bows are never really that ideal in terms of quality of life due to it being manually active click and hold click and hold click and hold but it definitely gets the job done and at quite a reasonable pace too so if you don't have the incarnates try this focus schools yeah i'm not gonna lie to you guys there's pretty much only one focus school that excels here and that's a matter i drew to a few things. Sling strength can increase your ability strength for the next 20 seconds. Power transfer gives critical damage to your amp, but also gives car speed to your warframes. Void strike is the most important one here, buffing our weapon damage by whatever percentage of energy you consumed during its ability cast. For the most part, you should have 1000% increased damage if you consume all your operator energy, which helps your warframes weapon damage, but it also helps your operator amp damage for 8 seconds, helping you kill both the angel and the fragmented boss quicker it's just a no-brainer for this ability and in those times where your void strike ability is on cooldown you can then go and use the contamination wave ability to debuff the likes of the angel by 50 percent to increase my operator damage against them whenever i enter the angel portal on the second time entering pretty much everything else here is just a bonus in other areas as well so if you don't have this focus score maxed out i get it just go ahead and run zenuric the good old reliable stick with whatever you guys can use all right operator and amp build so first things first the amp that i'm using consists of a 1x7. This basically means that I take the Rap Black Prism, whatever scaffold, because it doesn't matter, I'm not really using it here, and the Certus Brace to go and increase the critical overall. This does some really good damage on that primary fire. Eternal Onslaught Arcane combines with Void Strike. Whenever my energy is fully depleted, I also get an extra 180% crit chance to my amp shots for 8 seconds. And Void Strike basically drains all of that energy. So there you go, hand in hand, they work together. This combination plus Magus Mel usually allows me to either one or two shot the angel in the first entered phase. So the second amp arcane also pairs with the synergy just mentioned. Eternal Eradicate increases our damage for eight seconds when using the ability. But I can also go ahead and get this to proc the second time I go and enter the angel fight because the contamination wave ability will also proc this as well. So those two together will help combine. Magus Melt on the operator works as follows. So dash into the ground a few times and will go ahead and consume energy, but it's slowly building up heat damage to add to your amp. This gives it around i think it's like a 210 percent additional increase i usually tend to do this quickly before entering the angel arena as it gives me some time to restore some operator energy as i'm entering the arena Alrighty, guys that's mostly about it that's a full breakdown of what i'm doing and how my builds are all coming together now all you need is a little bit of practice and you'll be soloing the fragmented boss in just under 10 minutes give or take which in my opinion isn't too bad without squads and that's also timed without min max and movement and dps now the quickest run that i had was just shy of nine minutes however 
However, it's more about consistency than speed. This is a way for all players to get the arcanes that they want from this kind of event, especially if you are a solo player. So I hope this helped you. Thanks for watching today's video. If this does go ahead and help you, or if you know someone that it could go ahead and help, then give the video a cheeky like and a share. If you are new, come subscribe to the channel. But as always, I'll be seeing you guys in the next video.